Hi everyone, welcome back to another fun-filled lesson of actual speaking. My name is Jennifer Clyde. We are already on lesson 16. Now we're going to begin a whole new category in focus on grocery shopping, food and eating in general. Today's topic is grocery shopping. So let me begin by asking you a few simple questions. Who usually or normally does the grocery shopping at your home? Hmm. Are you the one to go out to the supermarket or to the local markets? Or do you even go to the large discount stores when you go grocery shopping? Now, uh, how many times a week do you go for groceries or to shop for groceries? Let's imagine you go to a large discount store or a large supermarket. Which section do you head to first? Meaning, which section do you go to first? Some people say they shop for fruits and vegetables first and then they find their way down and up and down and up or up and down all the aisles. There are several sections at grocery stores, rather large ones, such as discount stores, such as the dairy product section, fruits and vegetables section, there's a seafood section and the meat and poultry section, many of them at those stores. So we'll be talking about that and much more. So are you ready? Let's get started. Oh, Peter, you gotta give me some ideas. I hate going shopping by myself. Buying mm -hmm. for one is a nightmare. Uh, yeah. Everything's in bulk. And <laughs> I can't buy 20 toilet rolls for myself. That's why you need a bigger place. <laughs> get a bigger place, get some friends over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who does the grocery shopping at your house? Well, we used to go together a lot, but then once the babies were born, she would stay at home with the babies and I'd that would go to make the sense. big, huge store and get the big, huge amounts but of But you're everything. buying for yeah. four people. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, two big people and two, <laughs> two big, very, li very little, little people. people. Half people. <laughs> right, right. So do you cook at home as well? Yes. So you tend to buy fruit and vegetables a lot more? Uh, I, I go for the fruits and vegetables first, make sure I get I those. I think that's how the supermarkets are usually organized. You go mm. in and you get the fruit and vegetable section and then you go on to the meat. Yeah, the because tree. they figure everybody will just <laughs> buy all the snack foods and leave. Otherwise. Oh, right. <laughs> I had no idea. My wife and I both, both like fruits and vegetables a lot. Or at least she likes fruits. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's a great way to start and then you can plan all your meals. The thing is though, discount stores are good, but I tend to buy fruit and vegetables at the local markets. Mm -hmm. um, the fresh fruit markets, they tend to be a lot more fresh and a lot less expensive as well. And um, I've been using the local markets a lot more recently. Okay. Yeah. Do you, uh, what do you tend to buy? Uh, I buy a lot of cucumber, <laughs> a lot of lettuce because I eat a lot of meat as well. Mm. Uh, what else? Tomatoes, onions as well. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the discount stores, you have to buy like a bag of a kilo of onions, mm. whereas I can buy one onion for okay. myself. So do you make food just for yourself? Just for myself, occasionally for a friend who comes over. Mm -hmm. But I tend to be, I have a big hand. Mm -hmm. That's what you call it in Korea. Mm. I, I Cook for about four people when I'm by myself, mm -hmm. so it lasts me a few days. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Did you enjoy today's actual talk between Peter and Joanne? Now, what did they talk about? They mainly focused on going grocery shopping. They talked about which sections they go to once they get to local markets or even large discount stores. They also talked about what they usually buy, and they even mentioned, I guess for Joanne, she lives alone, so grocery shopping. When it comes to grocery shopping, she tends to buy, yes, just small bits of things, not large amounts. Whereas Peter said that now he's got a wife and two children, he has to buy everything in bulk, meaning in huge amounts. So let's find out in detail what they talked about. Here we go. Now, Peter began by say, uh, sorry, Joanne began by saying, Peter, I hate going shopping by myself. Of course, since they are talking about grocery shopping, we can tell that is exactly what she is saying. But what's the point? She hates going shopping by herself. And she says buying for one 
is a nightmare. Now, this could actually have two different meanings. Let's take a look at the sentence. Buying for one is a nightmare. This could mean, first of all, well, basically, shopping could be a nightmare, or it could also mean buying for one person is a nightmare. Okay, so please do keep that in mind. Now, everything is or everything's in bulk. Okay, now bulk itself means like a huge pack of something. I think the most, uh, the closest Korean word would be bukkum, right? So if you maybe go to the supermarket, you'll find huge bulks of things. A bulk of ramyeon, meaning a whole package, a big package of ramyeon consisting of maybe 10, 20, or even 30 ramyeons. Uh, you may even go to buy toilet paper just for one person, but then again, usually they sell them in bulk, meaning many money of them packed in one pack. So that is bulk. And if you say buy something, or if you say everything is in bulk, it means that, yeah, they come in huge packs. All right, since that word is uh, colored in green, we'll take a look at the pronunciation in just a bit. Let's move on. And I can't buy 20 pack toilet rolls for myself. Now, once again, here's another word, bulk, bulk. In this case, pack, pack. 20 pack meaning it's one pack consisting of 20 rolls of toilet paper. All right, and then Peter says, that's why you need a bigger place. He's kind of joking, okay? And then Joanne says, get a bigger place, get some friends over. And then she asks a question. Now, who does the grocery shopping at your house? The point is, do grocery shopping or go grocery shopping is another way of asking this question. Now, Peter said, well, we used to go together a lot, all right? Meaning him and his wife used to go grocery shopping a lot, okay? But then once the babies were born, mm -hmm, she would, meaning his wife, she would stay at home with the babies. And I would go to the big, huge store and get the big, huge amounts of everything. So I did underline a few things here. That is to practice these patterns. First of all, if you take a look, Peter said, I would go to the big, huge store. I would go to the store, right? So, in order to do what? And get, meaning get, purchase, buy. Buy the big, huge amounts of everything. And then Joanne says, but you're buying for four people. So, she's saying, well, obviously, there are four people in your family, so of course you have to buy many, many things in huge amounts. Now, Peter says, yeah, well, two big people, and to very, very little people. This is just a fun way, okay? Just a, an interesting way of talking about adults and here, very little people, meaning babies or children, okay? That is exactly what he meant. So he's saying, yeah, well, two adults, meaning him and his wife, and two very, very little people, meaning their two children, okay? Now, Joanne says, so, do you tend to buy fruits and vegetables a lot more. And Peter says, I go for the fruits and vegetables first. Uh, the uh, section could have been omitted here. He could have said, I go for the fruits and vegetables section first, or it could mean that I go for, meaning I go to buy. I buy fruits and vegetables first, all right? And then Joanne says, I think that's how the supermarkets are usually organized. All right, let's take a look at this word here. So Joanne is pretty much talking about how the supermarkets, right, they are organized, meaning structured, okay? She's talking about the system, okay? So organized in this case does not mean that everything is neat and tidy. She's saying that supermarkets are specifically or they are structured in a particular way. Now you go in and you go to the fruits and vegetables section area and then you go on to, meaning you continue going to the meat and poultry 
and that's what she said. I added this section there for you to help you understand a bit easily. Now, we all know what fruits and vegetables are. We know what meat is. What about poultry? Poultry. Basically, poultry. If someone says poultry, think of chicken, turkey, and like duck. Okay, so birds, domesticated birds, we're talking about um, meat, such as like white meat, for example. All right, and then he says, My wife and I both like fruits and vegetables a lot. Now, discount stores are good, but I tend to buy fruits and vegetables at the local markets. The word here, local. Uh, it's used in many different situations, but in this case, a local market or local markets are markets in a certain area or in a town or a specific region. You're talking about the smaller markets, okay? So when she buys fruits and vegetables, um, yeah, she prefers to go to the local markets. Hmm. And she does not go to discount stores that often for fruits and vegetables. And then she says, the fresh fruit markets. They tend to be a lot fresher and a lot less expensive as well. Now, this is a good way to talk about, well, what you do. First of all, she gives her reason. Uh, first of all, she gives you an in, I mean, information about where she goes for things. Local markets, and she called them fresh fruit markets as well. And then she gives you details as to why she prefers to go to these local or fresh fruit markets. Why? Because they are, meaning the fruits and vegetables, are fresher and less expensive. Yeah, it's a better buy, I guess. Now, Peter asks, what do you tend to buy? Let's find out what Joanne tends to buy. Well, lots of things. Let's take a look. I buy a lot of cucumber, a lot of lettuce. Why? Because I eat a lot of meat. Okay. So she's making sure that her diet is filled with not only meat, but veggies as well. And then she thinks, ah, what else? Tomatoes and onions as well. Okay, these are pretty simple words, so let's move on. And if you go to the discount stores, mm, you have to buy a bag of, uh, a kilo of onions. And then she says, whereas I can buy one onion for myself. So this is another reason for why she chooses to go to smaller or local markets. See, if you go to large discount stores, that's true. When you buy onions, of course, they do sell onions separately, I think, but usually they're in big packs um, with like 10 onions in them. So she's saying, since I live alone, I don't need that many onions. I prefer to go to the local markets to buy one onion for myself, meaning for herself. Now, Peter says, okay, so do you make food just for yourself? Meaning, do you cook for yourself? And she says, for myself and occasionally, occasionally, off and on, once in a while, for a friend who comes over, who comes over to my place, or who comes to visit, or who comes to my home. But I have a big hand. You know what this is, right? In Korea, we say, 손이 크다. That's exactly what she's saying. But I have a big hand. That's what you call it in Korea. She explains what it means. And then she says, I cook for about four people, okay? When I'm by myself, so it lasts me a few days, okay? So if you take a look, this sentence, this final sentence over here could be a bit confusing, so let's break it up, okay? Now, when I'm by myself, so it, meaning the food lasts me a few days. But here, let's take a look at the beginning of the sentence. It means I cook for about four people, meaning I cook four servings. 사인분, right? In that case, you can say I cook for two people. I cook for about three people. I cook for 10 people. So she's basically giving us information about how much food she prepares at once. And I guess she tends to put it in the refrigerator. Uh, yeah, since the food can last her a few days. Okay, everyone, that was a wrap for today's dialogue between Peter and Joanne. Here's actual talk one more time. Oh, Peter, you gotta give me some ideas. I hate going shopping by myself. Mm -hmm. Buying for one is a nightmare. Uh, yeah. Everything's in bulk. 
And I can't buy 20 toilet rolls for myself. That's why you need a bigger place. <laughs> get a bigger place, get some friends over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who does the grocery shopping at your house? Well, we used to go together a lot, but then once the babies were born, she would stay at home with the babies and I'd that would go make to the sense. big, huge store and get the big, huge amounts of But everything. you're buying for four yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, two big people and two, <laughs> two very, big, very little, little people. people. Half people. <laughs> right, right. So do you cook at home as well? Yes. So you tend to buy fruit and vegetables a lot more? Uh, I, I go for the fruits and vegetables first, make sure I get I those. I think that's how the supermarkets are usually organized. You go mm. in and you get the fruit and vegetable section and then you go onto the meat. Yeah, laundry. because they figure everybody will just <laughs> buy all the snack foods and leave. Otherwise. Oh, right. <laughs> I had no idea. My wife and I both, both like fruits and vegetables a lot, or at least she likes fruits. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's a great way to start, and then you can plan all your meals. The thing is, though, discount stores are good, but I tend to buy fruit and vegetables at the local markets. Mm-hmm. Um, the fresh fruit markets, they tend to be a lot more fresh and a lot less expensive as well. And um, I've been using the local markets a lot more recently. Okay. Yeah. Do you... Uh, what do you tend to buy? Uh, I buy a lot of cucumber, <laughs> a lot of lettuce because I eat a lot of meat as well. Mm. Uh, what else? Tomatoes, onions as well. Mm-hmm. And if you go to the discount stores, you have to buy like a bag of a kilo of onions, mm. whereas I can buy one onion for okay. myself. So do you make food just for yourself? Just for myself, occasionally for a friend who comes over. Mm-hmm. But I tend to be, I have a big hand. Mm-hmm. That's what you call it in Korea. Mm. I, I Cook for about four people when I'm by myself, Mm. so it lasts me a few days. Okay. All right, then, now that we've taken a listen to Actual Talk one more time, let's take a look at the words that I highlighted in the conversation just to help you pronounce them correctly. All right, first of all, remember we had bulk? I buy everything or everything's in bulk when I go to big department stores or large discount stores, meaning they're all in big, huge packs, right? So bulk, the pronunciation is very simple, bulk, bulk, that's right. Some other words, some synonyms are amount, volume, and that could also mean weight in some cases, okay? Just a huge bulk of something. What about poultry? Remember, I was talking about chicken or even uh, turkey. You may go to the meat section. You can also go to the poultry section. Pronunciation is poultry, poultry, as if you would pronounce P-O-L-E, poultry. Moving on to local. We talked about going to local markets, right? Rather, local markets are what? Local, meaning regional, town, neighborhood. So we're talking about smaller markets, okay? Not across the entire country, but rather in neighborhoods and towns. So pronunciation is local. Now, this is a pretty simple word, but I picked it. I selected it for uh, today's pronunciation because I have seen a lot of people pronouncing that word as local. Local. Local, local. Actually, the uh, C in this case, it's more of a g, g sound. So it's local, local. One more time. Local. Good job. And then the next one is tomato. We all know what a tomato is, right? Now, the reason I included that is because um, in America, of course, we say tomato, tomato. But elsewhere, uh, for example, It can be pronounced as tomato, okay? You see? Tomato, tomato. Uh, As in like British English or even in Australia, they may say tomato, tomato and not tomato. It's your choice. You can say whatever you want to. And we have kilo. Remember, uh, I think Joanne mentioned something about buying a kilo of something. So kilo is a shortened word for kilogram or even kilometer. Now, we don't say kilo, we say kilo. It's a long E sound, so it's kilo, kilo. All right, we're done with the words. Let's now move on to a few patterns you can make use of. First one is buy a something of something. I need to buy a bag of rice, right? I need to buy a bag of rice. Let's check out one more. I need to buy a box of 
It's a very simple pattern, okay? Buy a box of something, buy a pack of something, buy a jar of something, all right? Okay, moving on. I need to buy two kilos of grapes. When it comes to fruits and vegetables or even meat, you can buy them in kilos, right? So you can say, I need to buy three kilos of meat. I need to buy two kilos of grapes. Okay, now let's move on. Make food for, they talked about making food for how many people, for instance, or you can even make food for a special occasion. Okay, here are a few sentences. I'm going to make food for five people tonight, okay? And let's check out one last sample sentence. I always make food for my husband. So you can make food for somebody or for a lot of people, or you can make food or cook for special occasions as well. So everyone, please do make sure that you pronounce the words we went over clearly and correctly, and please do make use of these patterns. All right, that's a wrap. So I was recently talking to my friends about what is the finest art out there? And I really think that cuisine and the art of cooking is something that involves all five of the senses. Like when you look at it, the aesthetic has to be pleasing. Um, the taste has to be good. The smell has to be good. Everything about cooking is really an art form. But I think one of the downsides to being here in Korea is that cooking can be quite difficult because groceries are so expensive. So what I try to do is go to like the big stores, the big grocery stores around like eight o'clock and everything is on sale and you get a little bit of everything and it's more possible for you to cook. I really like cooking and I have this kind of silly rule about cooking, which is when I have foreigner friends come, I make Korean food. And when I have Korean friends come, I make foreign cuisine. So I think that's kind of an interesting mix for me to do when I cook at home. I really like cooking and um, food is something that everybody can enjoy. So if you have a taste palette, you can enjoy food and it's sort of a very social thing. So that's why you go out and you meet your friends and you eat a lot and you talk a lot. And I think food and the art of eating is something that you can do all the time and enjoy. Now, she's one individual with lots of energy. Thank you so much for that actual story of yours. Now, we had a chance to find out about her idea, what she thinks about cooking. I really like the way she said that cooking or food itself, or yeah, especially cooking is kind of like an art form. It's like art, right? A piece of art. Uh, and there are special things about it that make it so special. She talked about how she enjoys cooking, making food for herself and for other people. And she even said that she had a very unique uh, rule when it comes to cooking. When she has Korean friends over, she makes what? That's right, Western cuisine. And when uh, foreign friends come over, she makes Korean cuisine. So that was a wonderful response. Let's check out what else she mentioned. Now here we have a first one. I try to go to the big grocery stores. Now she's talking about where she goes. Around when? Eight o'clock. When everything is on sale. That is so true. Does it start at eight o'clock? I thought it started at like nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, nearly 11 o'clock. At least the discount store in my neighborhood, if you go around 10, y'all, almost everything is on sale. So wonderful. She's mentioned where she goes for groceries and at around what time she goes. And she even added her reason why she goes there at eight o'clock. Okay, another one. I really like cooking and food is something that everybody can enjoy. So she's talking about the wonderful things about food. Another one, if you have a taste palette. Now she's mentioned taste along with the word palate, but now palate itself uh, means sense of taste. So you can say, I have a palate and most people will understand that you have a sense of taste, okay? So if you have a taste palette, you can enjoy food, of course. 
Well, even if you don't have a taste palette, you can enjoy food. Anyhow, it's wonderful that she used the word palate once again. It also means the top of your mouth, the top part of your mouth, and also sense of taste. Okay, let's see. Mm, I've got one more for you. I really like cooking, and I have a rule about cooking. So, that rule was something that I mentioned, right? Her rule was, yeah, when certain friends come over, she makes certain kinds of foods. I really like cooking, and then she talks about her rule when it comes to cooking, what she tends to do when she cooks for people. I have a rule about something, meaning that you try to do that most of the time. You try to stick to doing that. So wonderful job. Thank you so much for the wonderful actual story. That's about a wrap. So I was recently talking to my friends about what is the finest art out there? And I really think that cuisine and the art of cooking is something that involves all five of the senses. Like when you look at it, the aesthetic has to be pleasing. Um, the taste has to be good. The smell has to be good. Everything about cooking is really an art form. But I think one of the downsides to being here in Korea is that cooking can be quite difficult because groceries are so expensive. So what I try to do is go to like the big stores, the big grocery stores around like eight o'clock and everything is on sale and you get a little bit of everything and it's more possible for you to cook. I really like cooking and I have this kind of silly rule about cooking, which is when I have foreigner friends come, I make Korean food. And when I have Korean friends come, I make foreign cuisine. So I think that's kind of an interesting mix for me to do when I cook at home. I really like cooking and um, food is something that everybody can enjoy. So if you have a taste palette, you can enjoy food. And it's sort of a very social thing. So that's why you go out and you meet your friends and you eat a lot and you talk a lot. And I think food and the art of eating is something that you can do all the time and enjoy. Well, today we had a fun time, or at least I had a wonderful time. I hope you had fun too. Learning ways to talk about going grocery shopping. So one more time very quickly, where do people usually go for groceries or go grocery shopping? Large discount stores, small mom and pop stores, perhaps in the neighborhood. You can even go to the local markets or fresh fruits markets and many other places, even department stores, for example. Now, when it comes to talking about going grocery shopping, I hope you will have no trouble in the future. Okay, next time I'll be joining you back with another food-related topic. We'll be talking about cooking, making food, so please be prepared for that. Uh, in the meantime, come to our homepage at www.ebse.co.kr and be sure to come by and leave a message. Leave some comments, feedback, whatever you want to say. Even a simple hello is more than welcome. So please do come by, everyone. Okay, that is a wrap. I'll catch you again next time. Bye, everyone.